like to welcome you once again to your, our Jew Business Tips and Lessons. What we will be discussing today for our GB learning is a continuation of the previous lesson on how to fill up books of accounts. In the exciting first um, lesson, uh, I showed you and taught you how to fill up the four books of accounts for a non tax taxpayer. So this time, I will be teaching you how to fill up books of accounts for a VAT registered taxpayer. So let's start first. The discuss natin is the first four books of accounts. So present in your first four books of accounts, kung VAT taxpayer ka. So ano yung apat na yun? Yung discuss ka last time, we have the cash receipts books, the cash disbursements books, the general journal, and the general ledger. Kung kayo ay VAT taxpayer, ang books of accounts yung may additional lang na two books. So yung first four plus two more books. Yung una is the sales books. The second is the purchases books. So I will be teaching you how to fill out itong dalawa na lang to because I already taught you how to fill up the first four. Okay? Simula na tayo sa sales books. Okay. Ano yung sales books? Ano laman yan? Ang sales books is a record of all your sales, whether cash or on account. Itsura niya, nabibigay yan sa bookstore, kaya ito. Okay, may other brands, pero pareho lang yan ng naman. Subsidiary Sales Journal. Itong Sales Journal or Subsidiary Sales Journal contains na all your sales, whether cash or on account. So, yung, first, yung mga column headings na dyan. Let's take the first example. June 1, it's ABC Corporation. You can write the address. Para to sa inyong preparation of summary list of sales and purchases, so you have to fill out the details. Yung next column is the invoice numbers. Yung invoice ito sunod-sunod because this is our invoice. So, yung ating printed invoices, ini-issue natin yan in chronological order. So, the listing of the invoice numbers dito dapat sunod-sunod din. Kung cancelled, isulat lang, the right cancelled. So, you have a trace ng pagkakasunod-sunod ng, ng mga invoice nyo. Next column is VAT. So, ito yung PIN ng inyong mga uh, buyers. Okay? So, dyan nyo isusulat yung VAT for your reference. Then, first column, among column is your sales kung exempted. So, meron na yung mga clients, minsan na hindi naman sila taxable because they're exempted. For example, religious organizations, mga schools, yung mga yun, hindi lahat ng schools ha, are exempted. But if your client is exempted from VAT, dito niya ilalagay yung sales sa kanila. Yun namang taxable, yung mga VATable clients, lalagay niyo naman doon sa taxable column, to charge niyo sila ng 12%. Ang ilalagay niyo dyan is VAT exclusive. <clears throat> hindi kasama yung VAT. Net of VAT na inalagay niyo ang mga Then, next column would be your zero-rated sales. Ibig sabihin niya, ito yung mga benta na wala rin silang VAT charges. Ang mga kasama dyan, yung mga exported sales niyo. Okay? So, kung may sales kayo ng export, so you don't charge VAT on your sales. Ang kasunod na column would be your VAT output tax. Ito yung VAT doon sa mga taxable sales nyo. Okay, so yung una, limbawa, ABC Corporation, may invoice number tayo, may VAT. Ang taxable sales nyo ay 10,000. Magkano ang VAT ng 10,000? Yun ang lalagay nyo sa output VAT na 1,200. Yung karugtong yan, nilagay ko lang sa baba kasi pag masyado mahaba, baka maliit, hindi na natin mabasa. We have classification of sales. Ika-classify nyo kung yung benta nyo ay local ba, kung foreign, lalagay nyo doon, or export sales. Tapos kung service, lalagay nyo din doon. Pwede checkan nyo na lang kasi kukopin nyo lang what you have doon sa first three columns. And then, yung susunod na last two columns would be yung terms nyo. Nagbenta ba kayo ng cash or on account? Ibig sabihin, yung column ng cash, ito yung lahat lang na nakolekta nyo, yung nasa account is your receivable. Then you have to write the page of the journal. This is the sales journal. Now, if you're going to match this with your cash receipts books, pakita ko lang, your cash receipts books, meron din cash sales doon. 
Actually, nakaproblema tayo pag nirecord nyo yung cash sales twice. So, gagawa tayo ng separate account and we will call that like a clearance account na magsa-zero out. Okay? So, ito. Halimbawa, ito yung cash receipts box nyo. Look at the entry sa, sa cash column nyo, sa, sa sales journal. Kung inirecord nyo man siya sa inyong cash receipts books, irerecord nyo siya under cash sales. Hindi cash. Cash sales. Hindi rin sales. Yun din yung gagamitin yung account sa sales journal. Pag, pag minutes nyo yan, pag nirecord nyo yan sa posting nyo, same amount, magsizero out yan. Halimbawa, ayun, ABC Corporation, ilalagay nyo yung amount, total amount of collection, ilalagay nyo sa cash sales. So, makikita nyo yung effect nyan sa posting. Magsizero out yan. Okay? Sa, sa kabila kasi, it's a, it's a debit. Dito naman sa cash receipts books, it's a credit. Pagka na-post na yan, nagsizero balance siya. When we discuss posting, I'll show you how to post this transaction. So, mas maganda ito yung demo ko kesa dun sa simple, simpler postings. Kasi dito, mas makikita nyo yung effect ng pagbabalance ng clearance account. Let's proceed to our next books of accounts. So, how do we fill up the purchases books? Ano naman ang laman ng purchases books? Ang purchases books nyo contains all purchases. Lahat naman ang ginili nyo, whether cash or on account. So, yung kung yung kanina, lahat ng benta, dito naman pinili. Siyempre, wala tayong pangbenta, hindi tayo pinili. Kasama lahat dito, yung mga ibang binayaran nyo ng may VAT, dito nyo ilalagay. So, parang sa yung journal, ito yung itsura ng kanyang cover, meron na rin silang uh, column headings. Wala na kayong gagawin kundi mag-fill up na lang. So, ito ang laman ng na inyong purchases journal. Again, hinati ko para makita nyo in a bigger picture para mabasa natin yung contents. Okay. Tunahin natin yung first transaction. The first transaction is a telecommunication payment. Yung invoice dito, invoice ng ating suppliers. So, yung pagkakasunod-sunod niyan, magkakaiba. Kasi iba-iba yung series nila. But for reference, of course, we still have to Place it there para pag gusto mong i-trace, itignan mo lang yung inyong records. Meron kayong reference ng invoice. And nakalagay naman yung pangalan ng supplier so you can easily look into your records. And nakalagay yung silang mahanap because of the reference. Since the first transaction is an expense, a telecommunication expense, or a utilities expense, wala na kayong ilalagay under column ng purchases dahil hindi siya purchases of goods. Talagay nyo ngayon yung input niyan, kung yan ay VATable, ang input VAT is 120. Lalagay nyo ngayon, ang amount ng invoice nyo, total amount of your invoice is the amount of your purchases plus VAT. So, 1,120 ang babayaran natin. And dito sa name of account, yan yung ilalagay yung utilities expense or if you want communications expense. Yung... Yung F column na yan, na may 504, yan ay effect ng posting. Okay, yan yung account number ng, ng utilities expense. So, hindi yung kasama sa ating discussion that I just showed you para <clears throat> makita nyo kung ano magiging itsura niya pagka na-post na. Okay, ang um, amount ng debit ay 1,000. Kasi utilities expense niya yan, so yun, yun yung debit niya, 1,000. And it's paid in cash, and you paid 1,120. Kagaya kanina, sa sales journal, meron kayong cash sales na clearance account. Dito rin meron. Ang tawag niyo naman, cash purchases. So, yun yung imamatch nyo mamaya. Kapakita ko sa inyo, imamatch naman natin sa inyo cash disbursements books. Yung sumunod, halimbawa si ABC Merchandising naman, Yung team column, pag nilagay nyo sa taas, VAT registered si supplier. Pag nan VAT, sa team sa baba nyo lagyan. Halimbawa yung kay ABC, sa so VAT tayo naglagay, ibig sabihin, VATable yung ating purchases dyan. So, ah, binili nyo, local purchases of goods, 20,000. Magkano VAT nyan, 12% nyan, 
kailagay nyo naman sa input VAT yung 12% of 20,000 at 2,400. And so, your total amount ng invoice ay 22,400. Nalagay nyo naman yun sa account if that's a purchase on account. Yung buong amount na 22,400. Now, let's look into transaction number 4. Ano, 3. Transaction number 3, ang i-fill out nyo din, ibig sabihin, non-VAT siya. So, you would see, walang laman si VAT input. So, yung buong 10,000 is also the total amount, oh, 15,000, sorry. 15,000 is the total invoice amount. Pareho lang sila, dahil wala nga kayo VAT. And then, if that's an account, pay payable pa lang, nagay sa account column. Kung collected na, nagay nyo sa cash column. Ganun din yung last transaction. Now, sabi ko sa inyo, i-compare natin yan with your cash disbursements. Makita nyo na si cash column nyo, paglagay nyo sa binayaran nyo lahat, kasi nang binayaran nyo ng cash, papasok din sa cash disbursements. So, medyo magkaka, ano sila, madodoble kung ilalagay nyo yung pinili nyo ng cash dito, ilalagay nyo na dun yung utilities, ilalagay nyo pa dito. But, sabi ko nga, meron yung clearance account na magsusero out. So, kung nilagay nyo man siya sa purchases journal, so, meron kayo dong cash purchases na, hindi nyo siya ilalagay sa cash. Meron kayong cash purchases column dyan. Dapat ang total ng cash purchases nyo for the month should be the same total ng cash purchases nyo sa cash disbursements. Bangga sila. Pag hindi sila nag-match, nag magkakaroon ng discrepancy ang record niya. So, dapat nang zero out yan. So, the cash is business books, na discuss ko na how, how to fill them out. So, ngayon, specifically, I have shown you how to fill out the, the additional two books of accounts, the sales journal and the purchases journal. Next topic naman natin yung posting sa ledger. Detailed, one by one, papakita ko sa inyo how to post. Ang ipapakita ko sa inyong posting dyan, ay yung ating sales and purchases journal specifically kasama yung other books, yung general journal, uh, cash receipts, and cash disbursements. So, abangan nyo lang. I hope you subscribe and make comments or requests for new topics and we'll come up with uh, the video so that I could help you and teach you and para mas lagi din yung practice ang inyong bookkeeping ng maayos. And if you have like questions, whether sa BIR man yan or, or sa, sa recording or sa business in general, pwede rin natin sagutin yan. Just message me and then I'll send a reply as soon as I can. Thank you very much.